Well, a very good morning to you. I can't tell you how how joy-filled it is to actually see some of you and hear some of you in helping to read the scripture. Thank you so much for uh, bringing us into this talk this morning. Uh, we're going to start with this thought. There is a lot more to God than your experience of him. There's more to God than your experience of him. Uh, a lot of times we think that because what we have experienced made us so full and it seemed so real that there's no more. And Jesus told a couple of stories that wanted to pierce through that concept. What he wants us to understand is that there's a lot more for us to learn, a lot more for us to grow in and become. We are a lot more likely to limit God than he is likely to limit us. And the question is, how do we limit God in our life? And Often it is because of the way he has done things in the past that becomes the, the litmus test, the standard, uh, the, the, the decider of how he's going to do things in our life now or in the future. Memories can actually become more real and more important than God in our lives. And so uh, Jesus wants us to understand that uh, one of the marks of authentic Christian faith is that there's ongoing growth, that we keep growing in our understanding of God. We keep growing into the kind of person that he created us and intends us to be. We keep growing in our interactions and relationships with others. There's so many options and opportunities for growth that faith is actually this dynamic thing. It's not static. It's not something that just sits still and you look at. It's not a museum piece, that there's something going on on the inside of us that continues to grow us. This fellowship with God is actually intended to be an adventure, not just a story that we rehearse and remind ourselves of, that we could pass a test on, but it's a relationship that we move through life with a sense of adventure, that God actually has more for our church family and more for us individually. And the challenge is, is that when we think about that, we can become a little uh, afraid, a little scared of that concept. Um, here's what I want you to see. God doesn't need to change, but everybody else does. There are things that we have to grow in. There are things we have to let go of in order for us to become all that he intends. So don't allow your experience of God to take the place of God. Let me say that again. Don't allow your experience of God to take the place of of God. So uh, stories that Jesus told are intended to kind of pierce through our tendency uh, to inflexibility when it comes to God's interaction in our life. And he actually gives us some insight as to what some of the side effects are of our inflexibility. God wants to show more of himself to us. He doesn't just want to replay what we know of him. Just remind us. That's important, but that's not all. God intends to do a lot more. So um, if you know anything about Jesus' interaction with the religious leaders of his day, they were often frustrated with him. Uh, he challenged their concepts. He challenged their memories. He challenged their traditions. He challenged their assumptions. And they really struggled with that because they couldn't get beyond what their own experience of God was. They didn't think there was any more to learn. As a result is that they became very inflexible. And what we see from God, from the opening pages of Genesis, all the way through the life of Jesus, is that God is actually quite creative. He keeps finding new ways to do new things in our lives. So uh, this passage actually began with uh, a great story of some men who bring their friend who's paralyzed to see Jesus because they're hoping that Jesus can heal him. And when they get to the house where Jesus was, they can't get in through the door. So they came up with a creative solution to that. They climbed up on the roof and they tore a hole in the roof and they let the man down into the home. A new way in, <laughs> tear up the roof. And then Jesus showed this man a new way out. And it was forgiveness. That something had to happen before he could walk. It's amazing how often we expect people to walk before they're forgiven. And Jesus forgives this man. 
it stretched the Pharisees way beyond their limit. It's not as though they didn't believe in forgiveness, but there was a very specific way forgiveness happened, and this didn't look like that. They knew God forg could forgive. They didn't believe that God was there. So forgiveness wasn't an option in this situation. And, and right after that, Jesus goes out and he calls a tax collector to be one of his followers. I can't tell you how hated tax collectors were in that day. I know a lot of people don't have high opinions of, of the Internal Revenue Service, but this exceeded all of that. In fact, if I were to try to find some kind of connection that you might understand, just, a, just try to imagine right now the person you're most offended by, the, 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 the kind of person that you're most uh, uncomfortable around. And that's who Jesus invited to be part of his followers. And that really stretched uh, the Pharisees. You know, who is Jesus allowing uh, to be around him? And, and then it, it doesn't just stop there. Uh, this person, Levi, wants other of his friends to be connected with Jesus, so he hosts a party in his house. And he invites all of his friends, and he invites Jesus, and Jesus goes. And it is not just a sit around and stare at each other kind of event. There's, there's a lot of joy in that space. And, and it frustrates the Sadducees. Religious things aren't supposed to be joy-filled, and you're not supposed to hang around those kinds of people. And, and everything is being stretched for them. And Jesus said, it's like a wedding party. Who goes to a wedding and cries? Who is sad that, that two people are, are engaging in this incredible covenant of marriage? And he said, and in those days, a wedding lasted for a week. And by the way, when you went to a wedding, you were excused from your usual religious obligations. And people would just go and they would celebrate for an entire week. And what Jesus is telling us is that our world can be changed and you will actually experience more growth in an environment of joy than you will in one of sadness or regret or frustration. He's piercing through assumptions. God will not be limited by your assumption or by your memories. He's not going to be limited. We can be limited by that, but God won't be limited by that. This is what it says in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. It says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. I think in our culture right now, this is something we desperately need. We need a new thing. And this is what he says. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. At the very places that we feel are driest and we feel like we are at a dead end. That's the very place that God intends to do a new thing. And something is happening right now. And the problem is not that God isn't working. It's just we don't perceive it. We don't recognize it. We don't see it and we don't celebrate it. Jesus has not come to make our life easy. He's come to make our life full. That's actually quite different. A full life might take on some responsibilities we would prefer to avoid. A full life might build some muscles that we would prefer not to stretch or strain. A full life may require something of us that we would rather hold on to. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it to the full. I think a lot of times we just come to God and we want our problems solved. And what God wants to do is he wants his presence to be with us so that we can face those problems and we can deal with those problems and we can rise above those problems and we can show a very dark and broken world what grace and truth look like and how much life and hope can exist. And so this is how Jesus pierces through our assumptions, our traditions our memories. Now, back in the day, wineskins were actually made out of goat skins, usually. And so they would treat the goat skin and they would tie it up and they would apply certain things to help make it waterproof. And then they would pour new wine into it and then they would seal it off. And wine takes a while to ferment. But because the skin was flexible and pliable, then as that fermentation process uh, occurred, uh, it was able to expand and, and take on all of that activity. 
The challenge is, is that once a wineskin became old and dried, if you poured new wine into it, it would burst. It wasn't able to adjust and to be flexible. So Jesus is telling us that we need to be flexible with what he wants to pour into our life because it is going to bring a lot of change. And then he also says, he talks about this patch, and he's not just saying we need a patch on the holes of our life. He's saying we need a new garment. If you just try to patchwork this thing, it tears, and we wind up losing even more. He's come to give us an entire garment of righteousness not just to cover up the pieces that we are ashamed of or afraid of. Now, these stories remind us that the best is yet to come, that God is pouring new things into our life, that he's providing new garments of righteousness for us, that God is not done with his work in us or in his work through us or in his work around us, that God has a lot he wants to accomplish. So instead of trying to make God flexible with our lives, we could make ourselves flexible to what God is doing. When I examine a lot of my prayers, I'm asking God to work on my schedule. I'm asking God to meet my deadlines. I'm asking God to provide the resources I prefer at the time I desire, at the quality that I recommend. And so a lot of my conversation with God is asking him to be flexible with me. And don't get me wrong, he's very generous. And he is very flexible. But when we listen to him, he will call us to become flexible, to allow something new to be poured into our lives that, that may look a little different or feel a little different than something we've experienced before. And it's good, and it's from him, and he can use it powerfully. So I'm just, I would love for us to be open, especially in the season when things are so stark and different for us, that we would be open to the new things that God wants to pour into our lives, to the new ways he wants to stretch us and grow us and help us become the all he intended for us to be. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, um, we do get used to our routines. We do like our structures. We, don't like to, we like to know what's coming next. We feel more confident when we feel more prepared. But you pierce through some of those models of approach in life, and you suggest that our confidence is not in our ability to control what's coming next, but in our connection with you, and that we can face things we would rather avoid. We can chase things we would rather run from, that we can take on things we'd rather let go of, because you are with us. So I ask that you would help us to become flexible. What do you want to pour into us today? We want to be new wineskins, and we want to receive the full garment of righteousness that you have prepared and created for us. We receive all of that today in Jesus' name. Amen.